to block number seven now and it's the four pointed star or as it's popularly known now the ninja star um, this one looks super complicated and it's our first real star and stars are super popular the trick with stars is looking at the components and figuring out how you can actually simplify it because if you look at this as a whole, you, your brain kind of starts to panic. Um, but if you break it down into its parts, what you're gonna notice is it's actually a nine patch. So it's just a nine patch. It's just that these four have been replaced with half triangle squares. And making a half triangle square is not as difficult as it sounds. Um, we will make it really quick and so you've already worked with triangles using the uh, creating the hourglass block um, and so you've already seen one quick technique of how to make triangles and I'm going to show you another one that's very similar but we'll make all four of these at one time and it's another one of those odd numbered uh, squares that you have to do it's six and seven eighths. I've tried seven, I've tried six and a half. Six and a half is just a little short and seven is just a little large. And six and seven eighths is right about the right size. If you're going to change that number in any way, go up. So you can go to seven and just know that you'll need to trim these down just a hair. Um, so what you actually wind up needing is four and a half inch blocks, nine of them. And it's just that four of them will be created with these uh, half triangle squares. So let me show you the cutouts that I've already made. So I've got my four squares. These will be my corner squares. And I've got my center square. So my star is gonna be in this green, this mint green color. So now I need to make my half triangle squares. And to do that, I'm actually going to use, let's those back out of the way. I'm actually going to use six and seven eighths inch squares, one of each. And I'm going to line them right up on top of each other. And last time when we were making the hourglass, we just did the sides. This time, you're actually going to do every side of it. And so you're going to do quarter inch all the way around and then we're going to cut it along the diagonals and I'll show you how that works. So I've got my squares lined up. I'm going to super double check that everything's lined up where I want it. One of the weird things you'll see me do and probably a lot of quilters is we'll scratch, use our fingernails, and what that actually does is give you a little bit more traction on that top one than you do on the bottom one. And so if you just need to scooch it just a bit, just scratching it just a little bit can usually get it scooted just that little tiny bit. All right, so now I'm gonna sew all the way around it. So I'm just gonna do four long seams. You could pivot if you want to there, but I usually just go ahead, cut thread, and do another seam. And you'll notice my seams are getting just a hair off and that's because the difference in the fabric this one is a little bit stiffer than this one is and so this one slides a little bit more so it's stretching a little bit as I go through it but I'm not going to worry about that right now I don't think it's enough to really make a huge difference That's the 
problem using a walking foot will help you avoid and so with this one it's just a stationary and so this slides under it and it has a little bit of tension to it and so it's just kind of pulling it just a little bit um, a walking foot actually grabs it just like the presser feet do and walks the top one along with the bottom one um, it's just up to you if you want to use a walking foot or not um, but this is just it's so little off that it's really not going to make a difference in what I actually come out with in the end so now what I'm going to do is go press all of my seams so that I can ease those um, seam lines into place and then I'll show you how to cut it this is one of those times where this is actually pretty handy because what I want to do and I don't really care how I orient it on there as long as I can make the cut along the diagonal I'm going to hold it here and with the hourglass we just made the one cut and I'm going to do that but with this one I'm going to lift that ruler up just a hair just try to keep that in place as much as possible and then lay it back down with hopefully not moving where my cut was and then I'm going to do the other diagonal too and this way I'm coming out with four triangles and when I press them open you're going to have your half triangle squares and so I'm going to go press these and then I'll show you how we're going to put all the rest of it together okay so now I have my triangles and that is not the orientation they go into just like that, and like that, right. Now, a lot of times I'll have to look at my pattern just to make sure that I've got my angles going in the right direction because I don't think I do. Something's wrong. No, that one's right, that one's right. That one's wrong. this one's wrong too. There we go. Um, so what you may have noticed while I was doing that is this configuration is one that's really popular and it makes a lot of different things because you can just move around your squares. Let's do, I think it's this way. you've got a different pattern so there's all kinds of ways that you can turn your triangles and just make it a completely different quilt pattern a quilt block and so I want them oriented not like that I've got it messed up again like that So, a lot of times the fiddling is right here, trying to figure out how I was supposed to orient it. So that's where it goes. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trim these little dog ears off. And it's not honestly necessary, but it adds extra bulk to your seams. And it just kind of gets in the way when you're trying to line things up. And so you don't have to be super exact about it. Just need to trim them off so that they can just get out of the way. And then now that I have my half square triangles, half triangle squares, then what I'm going to do is just piece it like a nine patch. And so what you'll start noticing about quilting is it's usually a very repetitive process it's not it's not rocket science it's it's being able to visually break things down into a more common variation and so you learn basic patterns like the nine patch or like the log cabin 
and those are different methods of putting things together and processes of putting things together and then you start noticing how all of the other ones are just variants of those and so this one is just a variant of a nine patch and so I'm going to flop it over just like I did my nine patches and I'm going to seam up this edge and then I'll seam these and then I'll seam the long ones so let's get started with that now again this is a repetitive process you've seen me do this a million times so I'll speed it up remember you just want to make sure that you've got everything as lined up as possible and when you need to just kind of uh, split the difference if you everything's not quite square and watch your seams so that you don't accidentally flip this the wrong way um, if it makes you feel better you can just do it on top so you can watch where it's going and this way it'll be going this way anyway and then we're going to chain piece just by pushing them all through since we already have them pre-cut and ready to go so here we go So here's my finished ninja star and everything seemed to line up. This is when you start having some issues with extra bulk in these corners because you've got so many different um, seams coming into one place. Um, really that's just press it as best you can and try to minimize that as much as possible. Once you start getting uh, more complicated stars that have a whole bunch of pieces coming in at one point there are some things that you can do to kind of ease the the seams on the back into one another um, but with this one it's really not much you can do uh, it's just fold it one way or another and try to fold it down to the point that it has the fewer seams um, so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have fun making them and if you have questions remember you can always email me at laura a at see you in the next one